Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning, Jacob. Good to see you as well. You're all very welcome. Good to have you all. If you're visiting with us, great to have you here this morning. End of the month already. January has basically gone, so family service this morning. Um, let's start with a couple of announcements. The uh, event there uh, tomorrow night for any farmers. Hopefully you've been uh, looking at that one. And the only other one I have to mention this morning is, um, I mentioned a few weeks ago about Songs of Praise, doing a recording in Derry, and um, uh, I emailed for tickets, and I've got, just got word yesterday that I've got uh, 10 tickets for Wednesday the 8th, which is Wednesday week. Um, uh, so the recording is in Derry, it's um, half past six, um, so at the minute I have uh, a few of those tickets left, so if anybody wants to come to that, you're very welcome to um, give me your name and talk to me afterwards. So it's half past six to half past nine. The Wednesday night is sort of the traditional night, um, the Tuesday night with the, the more modern songs, but the, the one I have tickets for is the traditional one. So Wednesday night, if you're interested in any of those tickets, speak to me afterwards. We've been starting to look at uh, Second Peter, and we've spent a couple of weeks so far looking at the first sort of 10, 11 verses. I'm going to spend another uh, service doing that this morning. Um, and let me just start by uh, Peter uses lots of uh, language and, and ideas in the, the first few verses. And one of the things he talks about is this precious faith that we have. So let me just uh, remind you using Peter's words about our precious faith. So what I've done is try to take the ideas of these 11 verses and put them into a paragraph or a few ideas that Peter, these are all Peter's words and thoughts from, from these 11 verses, this faith that he's reminding his readers about. Peter is just coming up to his death. He talks about his body like a tent that he's uh, about to leave. Jesus, remember, told Peter towards the end of his life, uh, when you get older, you will, someone will dress you and you'll lead you where you do not want to go. He knew that his, his last days were going to be um, more tricky than his early days. And Peter is very aware that he's about to, to come to the end of his life. And it's probably something like a year after this is written that he, he, does, he does die. And uh, he wants to remind his churches about this great gospel this great faith so these are this is the way i've tried to put it together god has given us everything we need in jesus our lord and savior he has called us selected us and cleansed us from sin we know him and share in his righteousness grace peace glory and goodness he has given us a rich welcome into his eternal kingdom where we can truly live godly lives and share in all that he has for us now and forever. All Paul's or Peter's words taken and tried to put together into a, a kind of summary of this precious faith that he's talking about that we come to, to celebrate this morning. This is our faith. We believe in Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who calls us and cleanses us who makes it possible for us to be in his kingdom forever and ever. Our precious faith that we're going to, to celebrate and enjoy this morning. I'm going to start by singing a couple of songs. One thinking about Jesus and how he has done everything. The, the power of the cross. The place where Jesus completes this, this wonderful work of salvation for us. So we'll sing... Oh, to see the dawn of the darkest day.
second one then takes us from the work of the cross to what they really achieved for us his people and all that great celebration of who God's people are. Amen. 
Let's join together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we just have so enjoyed standing and singing your praise together, focusing on the cross and all that you have achieved and won for us, all that you are doing and making and remaking in this world as you recreate the heavens and earth, redeem and restore a people who have been lost and broken. Father, we thank you for the gospel, for the good news, for our precious faith, based and founded and achieved everything done by Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Thank you that he has redeemed us, called us, saved us, brought us into his kingdom to be his people, to reign as his children now and forever. Father, we thank you for the hope that we have, for what we have come to know and believe as the good news for us, for our families, for our community, for the whole world. So as we gather this morning, we thank you that we're able to, to lift our eyes, to raise our voices, to gather our hearts together and with one voice proclaim that we love Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. And our hope is in him. And as we gather this morning, we ask that you would just be among us, help us to see and hear and know your spirit, your word, working and molding and shaping our hearts and minds and lives so that we would continue to grow in our, our faith and knowledge of you so that we would continue to grow in our godliness and goodness and love, all these things that we've been thinking about over the past few weeks. So Father, just bless us in all that we do here together this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's read these verses that we have been looking at um, for the last couple of weeks. Um, so we'll do it first about as we have been doing. So 2 Peter chapter 1, this is God's word. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who through the righteousness of God, our God and Saviour Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. And to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love. But whoever does not have them is short sighted and blind forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Amen. And we thank God for his word. 
Janice is going to come and do a mission update for us this morning. So thank you and um, just to start can we just say thank you very much to the congregation for their continued generosity um, to the mission account. Uh, we met on Thursday night to allocate some money and thanks to your generosity we had uh, a lot to uh, allocate and we gave, um, we were able to give a thousand euro to Francis and our team in Liberia to Mission Aviation Fellowship to Wycliffe and we had the Wycliffe speaker here back in the autumn and to Asia Link to open doors um, so we thank you sincerely for that. Sorry can I interrupt you? I meant to say something before Dan started and um, we we'll just going to do that now. Um, I wanted the kids to listen really hard because I'm going to ask you some questions later on in the service. So I want you to remember what Dan was saying, okay, and see if you can answer some questions later on. I forgot to say that. Do I need to rewind? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> um, and also the uh, Sunday school support a child um, uh, with compassion, which is another charity. Um, to, for her uh, education, so we top that up from the mission account as required. So this is really the the uh, people that we or the groups that we mostly support, but we're not limited to those uh, as well. If others needs comes up, and we try and be representative globally. So both you know throughout the world, the likes of Francis is obviously in uh, Africa, Mission Aviation Fellowship. Their brief is really the, the jungle communities, the hard to get to communities. Um, Wycliffe is again in your own reach people groups, Asia's obviously Asia Link. And then Open Doors is the persecuted church worldwide. And Compassion would be more a social justice ministry. So we we'll try and be representative at home and abroad. And we've given to local people in the past as well. It have helped them work. So I want to focus specifically this morning on one type of work. Um, it's a work done by Asia Link. Um, and it's in China, so China is obviously there at the very east of Asia. You'll be familiar with this map, uh, it's the World Watch List map. So the countries in orange and red are your severely persecuted church areas. So you can see yourself China is in orange. There's about 7% of the population in China would claim Christianity. And believe it or not, that number is growing all the time. The church is actually um, growing significantly in China. There's a huge amount of persecution and um, children are actually asked in school what about their, um, their parents' beliefs and that sends a way to identify uh, which, which uh, families or communities are Christian. So it's a very facetious way in, I suppose. Um, children are conditioned against Christianity but not only that, they are conditioned in communist ideology having to recite large parts of, of communist teaching. Um, parents are forbidden from teaching their children about Christ, even in their own home. And in that really toxic context, uh, church-based Christian ministries have actually been shut down. So Asia Link have embarked on this uh, project called Secret Sunday School. It's, uh, they have flyers on it um, and it's unique to China. And what they're trying to do is supply materials to the underground church. Now, for the techie ones among you, you're probably thinking, well, why don't we just go online and look it up and they can download their own stuff, uh, you know, for the, for the church or for their families. Um, you've all heard of the firewall uh, on the internet, um, so we have one on the HSE that stops you looking up stuff you shouldn't be looking up in work time. There's actually the firewall of China, so it's, uh, it's a virtual thing, obviously, but it's to actually stop Chinese Christians uh, looking up Christian uh, literature online. Uh, so you can imagine that that's obviously, if you're caught with Christian literature, the persecution is fierce and people are imprisoned and quite often they don't come home and if they do come home, they are quite often disabled or limited. Um, and the risks that these people take to distribute uh, Christian literature is immense. So they wanted to distribute this work covertly, so you've all seen memory sticks. Stephen has one there on the side of the computer, they're wee, wee sticks. Um, so obviously rather than going in with um, leaflets and books and what have you, these memory sticks have the Christian literature on it and uh, they can be distributed widely. Um, and this is something they're hoping for this year, 
seven distributors um, at a, a cost of 50,000 um, so that then Christian material could be distributed widely throughout China. So obviously then that's something we've been able to support through the mission account. So you're obviously all part of that. So I just want to say thank you um, from us, the mission committee, and obviously from these people, uh, these groups do write to Muriel and say thanks. So, um, uh, you know, we are very much uh, in the work that's been done here at reaching globally out to largely to persecuted Christians and marginalised groups throughout the world. So just I want to now pray, particularly for the work of Asia Link. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that we live in a world where we're not persecuted and we can come to church and worship you. And again, we're just very sorry for how we take that for granted and, and really are very blasé about uh, our freedoms. We pray particularly for the work in China as a vast country and yet they're looking for seven distributors. Um, to take these small memory sticks. Um, so we just pray that you would raise up people who are distributors, obviously it needs to be indigenous people, um, and that you would give them the desire to do this, and that you would protect them. We really ask for your protection um, for them as they travel around. We know even the roads in China are uh, quite hair raising, but more importantly than that, just the whole um, safety of them against the authorities, so that the authorities would be blind as to what's going on. Um, and that these small memory sticks would be would go into the right hands and that they would be used wisely. And help us also to be faithful in our commitment to give and to pray and to support. And just thank you for the great innovations that technology allows us to do and just to use that wisely. So we pray for your hand of protection now upon those people in China and just bless them today as they worship you whatever covert way they have to do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Normally have mission lunch the end of January before COVID. Um, the plan we are having is to do that at the end of March. Um, so we try and resurrect the mission lunch again after COVID and we'll do that um, the last Sunday of March is the, the plan at this stage. Spent so far two weeks looking at these verses. The first week, the focus I took was that God has given us everything we need to live godly lives. Peter reassures over and over again that God has done all this in Jesus. The, the work of salvation, everything that's need to be done, has been done and is being done and will be done. God has given us everything we need. And then last week, it was the other side of that coin where Peter says, now we need to live godly lives. We need to do everything that we can to live godly lives. To add to your faith, knowledge and goodness and self-control and brotherly kindness and love. There, he listed seven or eight different aspects that we need to add to our life. We're going to look at it this morning again. And uh, we're going to do it a wee bit different this morning. We're going to have like a, a health check up. Okay. So um, anybody feel 100% healthy this morning? Physically healthy? You're feeling 100% angry. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you at all. Right, two girls the same, absolutely perfectly healthy, nothing wrong at all. Brilliant. Any Megan as well, all our kids are fantastically healthy. Any adults willing to say that? Some very brave adults willing to say they're perfectly physically fit and healthy. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> okay, fit might be different from healthy. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm surprised actually that some adults are saying, yeah, I'm perfectly healthy because I don't know if I ever feel a day where you're perfectly healthy. And certainly the older you get, the more you're aware of that. Um, but yeah, physical health is something. Anybody go for regular checkups? Okay, yeah, some do that. Most of us just don't bother. So unless there's something that goes wrong, we don't bother to really think about it or look at it. Spiritual health. Peter talks about his body being like a tent. 
And Jesus had told them this tent, uh, towards the end of it, it wouldn't work very well. People would have to lead them around and clothe them and do all that, um, uh, the wonders and joys of older age. Um, he knew his days in his tent were coming to an end, and he wants to re-emphasize and remind about the important life beyond the tent, the, the life that's much bigger than just the tent life. Not just physical health, but the, the eternal spiritual well-being of who we are as people. We're more than just physical bodies. We're spiritual and physical combinations that God has made in a wondrous way. So this morning we're going to do a bit of a, a, bit of a health check on all of you. Okay? And there's three problem areas that, that Peter identifies. And the first one, I've called them walking problems, okay? Walking problems. And I'll explain why I've, I've used that title. A few months ago, Janice highlighted something for me that um, there was research done that one of the best indicators of whether you're going to live for the next five or ten years was a really simple test that we could do. And it was all you had to do was stand on your foot. How long was it for? 20, 30 seconds. If you can stand on one foot for 20 seconds, that's the best indication that your lifespan is sort of five, ten years is the outlook's good. If you're struggling to stand on your foot like that, then it indicates the, that you're not as healthy and the, the probability in the next five, ten years isn't as good. Now, now that you know that, you're all going to go home and the first thing you're going to do is see how long you can stand in one foot. Mobility, and like I say, all the tests they can do, they've reckoned that that is the one that it's a really good indicator of a sort of a lifespan. And not that amazing? They're just standing. Okay. Children want to do something for me? Okay. Can you just walk up and down the aisles? Just, yeah, just have a walk up and down the aisles. Just do it, because I told you to. Yeah. Okay, you're all... You're all managing that without any bother at all. Good. Right. That's okay. You can sit down. You seem to be managing okay. Yep, brilliant. Have a seat again. You're coming to sit up here. That's fine. You can sit here. You can sit to... You, that's grand. We can all sit together. Good. So you can all walk fine. Yep. No problems with your feet. Anybody ever broken an ankle or a leg or anything? You did. I remember that. Summer. You broke the arm, not the ankle. Yeah, yeah. So some of you, some of you know, sometimes you hurt the feet and it's hard. Right. Very dangerous to do the splits. Okay, spiritual walking. One of the things that we're talking about this morning, these problem areas. Peter says that um, that actually uh, we want you to produce really healthy fruitful lives and uh, if you do everything you can god has done everything you can then part of being his people one of the things that we should be doing is producing fruit okay he doesn't want us to be unproductive and ineffective okay so what kind of fruit do you think the bible talks about it says we are to be like trees that bear fruit what does oranges oranges you ever grew an orange on your arm or anything? <laughs> if you hold one, you think you can grow one? Wait, any kind of things? And he's making the world grow bigger. He's making the world grow bigger? Okay. God wants to grow lots of things in me. He wants to grow not oranges, not bananas. He wants to grow things like love, and joy, and peace. He wants to grow things like being able to control myself and faith and God. God wants all these things to grow in me. Life, more life, yeah, more life that, that God has. So, God says, Jesus says, I want you to grow all these things. And you know the secret to growing all these things? Water. Water, water is important. Soil. Soil. Jesus says the most important thing for you and for all of us to actually grow something is abiding in him. That means living with him. That's what had you walking, because it's about walking with him. So God says, what do you want, Andrew? 
God says, if I want to grow something, the thing that I want to grow is Jesus. And so what I have to do is I have to get really close to Jesus. And if I walk with Jesus, and he goes everywhere I go, and I go everywhere he goes, <coughs> then what's in him will grow in me. Great, thank you for your Jesus impression. <laughs> Growing. And Jesus says the most important thing you have to do is you have to walk with me. And if you walk with me, then what's in me will grow in you. So you've shown that you can walk. I got you doing that this morning so you're able to show that you can walk around. The challenge for our spiritual life is, are we good at walking with Jesus? You know what the word disciple means? Yeah. What's a disciple? God's friends. Good answer. Any other answer? What's a disciple? A follower. A follower. God's friends, your followers. <coughs> Literally meant a disciple is someone who walked with Jesus. Okay, so the first most important spiritual thing that we have to think about, if we want to be healthy people spiritually, growing spiritually, it's about how we walk with Jesus. Just a reminder, last week I did a, a sheet with some ideas and spiritual exercises and things based on that passage. There's some of those left out there. If you didn't get one of those, you can, you can pick it up and it might give you some ways this week that you can walk with Jesus and do things with him to get close to him, to be with him. Okay, so, eye problems. Anybody got any problems with their eyes? See, glasses, glasses. Anybody else had a night test? Mum, we had an eye test, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so did you. Mm -hmm. So did I. Yeah. You got glasses. What do you do at an eye test? I got an eye test eight years ago. Do you remember what they did? Drop some sort of food in your eye. Okay, they put something in your eye. And what did they make you do? Eye drops. Eye drops, yeah. And what did they make you do after the eye drops then? They uh, make the eye test to see if you can see properly. See if you can see it properly, yeah. After you get drops, you have to wait outside with the drops in your eyes so your eyes get bigger. Okay, your eyes get bigger with the drops, yeah, so they can see in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, here's your eye test. Can you all see the board? Yes. Okay, go down to the back and tell me you can still see the board. We can just turn around. Yeah, no, 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 see them, yeah. <laughs> Can you still see all the board, can you? No, it's not. Yeah, because Andrew's in the way, you can't see, okay. So, uh, you're able to read it from there, are you? Yeah. Okay, all good. Okay, I want you to close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Okay, now read it to me. With your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed and read it. Okay, alright. Up just come again. Were you able to read it with your eyes closed? No. I think I'll go down to the very bottom. You got down to the very bottom, yeah. So, so it was easy to read. Um, I, I had an eye test back last summer. And when I rang the lady, she knew I, I rang up and I'd been 10 years since I'd been from the last night test. And when she worked out who it was, she says, Oh, I'm guessing the arm isn't long enough anymore. She knew exactly what was wrong because it was getting to the stage where I couldn't see things like reading when I was looking close. I needed the glasses to help that because my eyes weren't working very well. Short sighted people can't, they, they can't see things. Up close, they get to, they get to, uh, the, the eyes just don't work properly. Can you see things with your eyes closed? Okay, so you can remember it with your eyes closed. Can you see it with your eyes closed? No. Not the real one, but you can see it. In your heads, yeah. You can't see it, you can remember it. 
can't see it. Okay, so it's there. When you see it, you can put it in the memory. So we'll be talking about memory in a minute, but we're talking about the eyes now. Okay, Peter says that one of the problems with becoming more like Jesus and growing lots of fruit, we have to walk with him, but we also have problems with our eyesight. Jesus says, that, or Peter says that one of the things that we do as human beings is that we, we don't be productive, we're ineffective sometimes because we're blind and short-sighted. Now, blind and short-sighted don't go together. You, you know, if you're blind, you don't see them short-sighted. But why does he put those together? Because he wants us to highlight two different areas. Short-sighted. Trees obscuring views of the forest. Can't see the wood from the trees. We use that phrase, don't we? We're so concentrated on looking at the individual things, we don't see the big thing. The tent. Sometimes we get so caught up seeing the stuff of this life and the stuff of our bodies and the stuff of this world that we're so caught up in seeing all that that we miss the big picture. The bigger picture of what God is doing. So Peter writes, remember the gospel. Remember all these great, incredible things that God is, has done and is doing and will do. And your tent is a passing thing, but it's part of this whole much bigger story. See, don't be short-sighted. See the wood from the tree. See the greater picture of eternity in the tent. Blind? Close your eyes. If your eyes are closed, you cannot see, you don't want to see, you will not see. Sometimes spiritual problem is we simply close our eyes to God. We don't want to see or hear or know. We don't want to look or listen or do. Part of the spiritual problem we have very often is that God shows us something or says something and we simply close our eyes to. When you close your eyes, you can still see. You can see, you can't see everything. Close your eyes, you can still see. You can see black. You can see black. Okay. <laughs> I know what you can't see, you can't see it basically in your head. You can see basically in your head. You guys have great imaginations. <laughs> which is going to be helpful for our memory one in a minute. Okay. Spiritual health. The working with Jesus. The keeping our eyes open and focused. The, the Bible is full of that picture, isn't it? Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. Peter here says, you know, don't be short-sighted and blind. See all that God is doing. Keep focused in that. And that's how you become spiritually healthy. To see the greatness and glory and wonder of God. I love that singing this morning in those first two songs. Or the, the seeing the power of the cross. To see the glory of what God's doing in his people. That's part of what worship does. It focuses on Jesus and then it enables us and fills us and enables us to do all that we need to do. It shows out the wood from the trees. That's why worship together is so important. To see the greatness and glory. And if we choose to close our eyes, that's not the spiritually wise thing to do. Okay. Right. I'm going to play a song now in a video. Okay. And then you're going to get your test after that. Okay. So... I'm going to ask you some questions about what Jan said. And see there on that, well, here, pointing down there. See on there, there's five words there. Those are the names of five stars. The Bible says in Psalm 147, God knows the number of the stars and has given every one of them a name. There's the name that we've given five stars. God knows all the stars. And there's thousands and thousands and millions and millions of them. And God knows them all. I'm going to play a song. And it's telling us to look and see how big God is and how amazing God is. You can join in if you want to join in the song. You can sing along. If you want to just sit and listen, you can do that. And um, what I want you to do is remember those names, okay? So Polaris, Sun, Orion, Sirius, Castor. See if you remember those at the end of the song. Okay. Right, here's the song.
highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. All powerful, untamable, all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly But where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and give source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky And you know them by name You are amazing, God All-powerful, untamable All-struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing, God We've been talking about walking problems. I we need to keep walking with God. We thought about eyes and that song. We saying how amazing God is and when we see just how great and amazing He is, but, uh, it's really important that we do that. So let's see how good the memory is. Remember the five stars? Give us one of them. Sun. Sun. That's the easy one. Lara, Sirius, Castor, Orius, 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 Not bad, I think we got about four and a half there, didn't we? Clara, Sun, Orion, yeah, close, Sirius, Castor, very good. Okay, let's see how well you're listening to Janice. You know the answer before I even ask the question. Yeah. Yeah. What, are you, what answer did you give? She gave a thousand to seven. She gave a thousand. She gave two thousand to seven charges. Okay. That was uh, almost the question I was going to ask. She gave a, a, a thousand to seven. Uh, she didn't, we did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Can you remember the names of those? I was going to ask, can you name three of the things that we, three of the charities that we gave the money to? That's what I was going to ask you. There were six or seven of them up there. Do you remember any of them? Francis and the team of Liberia. Yeah, very good. Francis and the team of Liberia. Okay. Open doors. Open doors, very good. There's two. Asia. Yeah, something Asia something. Asia Link. Very good. Not bad at all. Can you remember the country for children? 
are told in all way to believe in God. China, very good. Excellent. Okay. Um, we're, we're giving some money to a Sunday school thing. It's called something Sunday school. Something Sunday school. Secret Sunday school. Why was it secret so We don't have secret Sunday school here, sure we don't. Why was it secret? Yeah, because if the government finds out you're teaching children about Jesus in China, you're in real trouble. Your parents can get thrown in prison. Okay, so they were smuggling in, employing these workers to smuggle in uh, like worksheets and train people to teach Sunday school. And how did they smuggle them in? What was it they were using? Just put all this information on in Sunday school. Not fans, no. The memory stick, yep. Yeah. The memory stick. So that they could take them and give them to people and they would be able to um, so we'd be able to give some money to that, so as well as have our Sunday school here, for the children in China that we learn in Sunday school because of what we've given here, which is absolutely brilliant. Memories, what do you reckon? Not bad? Yeah. I'd probably give you what, 8 out of 10 maybe? 80% of you were getting a mark at school. Not bad at all. Excellent. Parents do as well, do they? Families. Those names are, are hard to remember. Okay, spiritual memory is really important. Peter says over and over again, I want you to remember this stuff that you know really well. I want you to remember it. And I want to remind you of this before I remember, remember, remember all the time. Is what Peter says. Remember what God has done. Remember what he is doing and can do and will do. Remember, remember, remember everything. God says that he remembers his people. He remembers us. It doesn't mean just to come, we come to his mind every so often. To remember. Close your eyes. You said you could remember stuff when your eyes were closed. They kept talking about that, didn't they? When their eyes were closed, they could see stuff. I never said that. You never said that. Some of them did. Uh huh. What do you want us to remember? To take time just to think, remember, concentrate. That's a really important thing to do. What we do with our minds, what we think about, where we put our energy and our memory into. Really important. Some of you learned a Bible verse before Christmas. Can you remember us? Andrew, go for it. John chapter 2, verse 16. Love with God so. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He has you can do that in 10 seconds. You can do that in 10 seconds. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. You can do that in 10 seconds. Go. Start. 10, 9, 8. <laughs> you can make me forget. You remember that, yeah, I know you remember. Excellent. Memory. To take time and, and think and remember all that God has done. To remember all that He has. Right, I'm going to let you go down to your seats. Thank you very much for all your help and all your answers this morning. Okay. So, spiritual health. There's three areas that we've tried to highlight. The, the area of walking with God, how important that is, how fundamental that is. The eyesight, keeping our eyes open and focused on what he's doing. And to remember and think and ponder and reflect all these biblical words and ideas that are so important as we continue to follow and serve in this place. I want to finish, I thought it would be good for us just to, to say this together, almost like a, a creed kind of thing. This is a, a celebration of, of our precious faith. Let's read it together. God has given us everything we need in Jesus our Lord and Saviour. He has called us, and elected us, and cleansed us from sin. We know him and share in his righteousness, grace, peace, glory and goodness. He has given us a rich welcome into his eternal kingdom where we can truly live godly lives and share in all that he has for us now 
and forever. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, as we've gathered in worship this morning, we thank you that we've been able to focus our eyes on Jesus and on all that he is doing. We pray that you would just continue to refresh us and renew us in our faith as we celebrate this wonderful faith, as we live out this wonderful faith, as we make every effort to live godly lives that Jesus has won for us. Would you just enable us to walk with him? to abide with him, to keep our eyes focused, to keep our thoughts and minds attuned to these gospel truths and reality. So Father, would you continue to bless us as we go from here this morning to serve you in this world, to be your people in this world. Father, help us to keep our eyes open, our ears open. Help us to walk in righteousness and goodness and love. Our Father, as we gather this morning, we want to, to remember and pray for those in our congregation who are unwell, who are struggling with the ongoing physical problems and challenges of this world. Father, we pray that you would just bring grace and peace and healing and wholeness. Father, we don't just pray for one another physical well-being in life, but we want to, to pray for one another spiritual life and well-being. Father, we pray for those who, who can't be here to worship through old age or would love to be here but can't, those who have who drifted away from you, Father, we pray that you would stir up hearts and minds again in love for you, that you would draw people to yourself and, and help them to believe in Christ and walk with him. Father, we pray that that would be an increasing reality in our midst, in our, our church family, in this whole community, that more and pe more people would come to believe in this precious faith that we have. Father, we continue to pray for your presence and help and strength in the challenges that we endure. Father, in the ups and downs of life, would you help us to know your grace and your goodness. So Father, we just take a moment to bring that one big thing that we have in our hearts this morning and just leave it at your feet. Father, we thank you that you are the awesome God. You can take that and everything else and look after it and we trust it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Focus My Eyes on You is one of those songs that I nearly always use at the start of a service um, and I've come to use it more at the end of a service because um, it's easy to focus our eyes and focus our attention in God here. It's much harder to do it when you go out into your homes and your workplace. And that's probably where we, we need to concentrate it on it most. So this is to prepare us to go out and serve in this week. Focus my eyes on you, O God.
So may we go to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And may his grace, love and peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen.